One of the obvious tests for the innateness of an ability is whether it occurs at birth or soon after. Human newborns seem so helpless that it is easy to believe that, apart from a few simple behaviors and reflex actions, they have no real cognitive abilities, and all of the competencies that they have as older children are slowly acquired by interacting with the environment. This perspective was advanced by the most famous developmentalist of all, the Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget. He saw his view as an alternative to the extreme environmentalism of the philosopher Jean Locke and the extreme nativism of Descartes, Chomsky, and Fodor. Rather, Piaget saw development as a process whereby the child actively constructs its understanding of the world. One of Piaget's most important contributions was his suggestion that there was much in common between psychological development and biological development. Modern geneticists do not see genes as determining physical and behavioral development. Rather, they are seen as guiding the process of development in a probabilistic manner. So behavioral geneticists discuss a developmental timetable, which involves a series of likely milestones, such as first steps or the first spoken words. Such a developmental sequence does not proceed along a fixed pathway, but it depends on a large amount of environmental feedback. Likewise, Piaget believed that in psychological development, experiences matter, but that which is learned from experience is constrained by what was already present in the infant's pre-existing mental structures. Piaget's theory postulates that development progresses in a stage-like manner. Stage theories usually specify that the child's knowledge changes drastically at one or more points in development. Piaget's theory suggests large qualitative changes in knowledge, rather than changes which are merely quantitative, such as learning a new fact about the world or a set of new facts. Such changes often have marked effects on behavior. For example, in Piaget's theory, the ability to adopt perspectives of others. Stage theories are often domain general, so a change affects many domains, such as person perception, language, and physical reasoning, rather than being specific to a particular domain. Stage theories require changes to be rather sudden, the child's understanding of the world changing noticeably over a few weeks or months, followed by a more gradual increase in knowledge. During their first year, however, infants will learn an important concept, object permanence. Everything has a life of its own, even if it is out of sight. At Maya's age, babies know to look for the object but they might not have everything else straight. Ten-month-old Simon is about to make a classic mistake. Although he watched us place the toy plane under the white cloth, he'll look for it where he last found it, not where he watched us hide it. Can you look at these two glasses? Do you think that they have the same amount of juice? Do you think they have the same? Okay. Now we're going to pour this juice into this glass. Now, do you think that this glass has more juice, this glass has more juice, or do you think that they have the same amount? That one has more. This one has more, and why do you think that this one has more? Because uh, it's taller. So first we're going to look at these two cups right here. Do you think there's the same amount of juice in this glass as there is in that glass? They're even. They're even? Okay. So we're going to take the juice from this glass and pour it into this one right here. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at this glass and that one. So do you think that there's more juice in this glass, more juice in this glass, or do you think that they have the same amount? Same amount. Okay, why do you think that they have the same amount? Just because this is skinny doesn't mean it, it, it doesn't, it's not the same amount. It, it has the same amount of juice in it, but it this one is just wider and this one's skinnier, but they have the same amount of juice. One question that Piaget sought to address was the observation that although children have very different experiences, they tend to develop in a very similar way. For instance, reaching the major developmental milestones at approximately similar ages. In order to explain this phenomenon, Piaget drew upon the work of geneticist C.H. Waddington. 
he proposed that development could be thought of in terms of an epigenetic landscape. This figure shows such a landscape. The ball is at the top end of a valley that subdivides a number of times during a life by the lines panning across the image. And the path of the ball represents the particular developmental trajectory taken by an individual child. As the ball rolls through the landscape, different environmental conditions might lead to perturbations in the ball's trajectory, but it will tend to return to its original path. Environmental conditions can affect the path that the ball takes, but these effects are always constrained by the structure of the landscape. Only extreme environmental activity would cause the ball to switch pathways and go down a different valley. The nature and size of the effect is constrained by the structure of that which is already present, represented by the topography of the epigenetic landscape. These constraints serve as a buffer, and children will tend to turn out similar to each other despite having quite different learning experiences.